Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are working on the Skoda Superb again. We are replacing this GPF filter. And I went ahead and removed I removed the drive shaft, which is gonna give you a bit more room. I put the chasm jacks and everything. If you are interested to find out how to remove the drive shaft, I have done a video replacing the EGR valve where I, I have removed the drive shaft. So I'll put the links in the descriptions. Uh, let me show you underneath. The reason why I think I got it more than I bargained for is, is one whole unit it extends right sort of like in the middle of the car. If you see that clump right here, that is the whole uh, GPF filter pipe. And I might have the limitation of the ground to be able to sort of uh, maneuver it out. So a little bit concerned about that. Another thing, I don't have enough room here on this channel of the car to get it through. So. I believe we're gonna have to drop the subframe and staying rack as well. So, but I will start at the top and I'll show you how to remove everything at the top and then we concentrate underneath here. So the top here, we have these three 10 millimeter nuts to remove first. We have a Uchu sensor, 22 mil to remove. And then we have another sensor at the bottom there. So that's the temperature sensor, 17 mil. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. And also we have, sorry, I have that bracket as well for the for the connect to the turbo. It's a five mil Allen. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all those. There's a 13 millimeter down the bottom there, but I'm not able to show you. So 13 millimeter bolt in its corner. So that's it from the top. All right, so at the back here, we have this brace. So four 13 millimeter bolts, and then the exhaust clamp or the GPF clamp with the exhaust. I think they are two 13 or 12, one of those two. Right, so the, it's disconnected now, the GPF is disconnected. It's just held by this bushing here now. Now we have what seems to be another temperature sensor here. So that's 17 mil, that's what I'm gonna remove next. Okay, right, so the subframe is gonna have to come down. So we're gonna remove the dog and bone first here. All right, just 16 volt there, now 21. Alright, so the dug in bowl now slips out. Alright, so we're ready for the subframe now. So what I'm going to do, I'm using my my jack here to support it so it can drop it down nice and slowly. Alright, there we go. So I, re I disconnected the, the exhaust brackets already, 213 mil, so that's that's done. All right guys, I removed all the bolts for the subframe and I start dropping the, the frame down and I realized the steering rack was, was going to come with it. So I just removed this 13 millimeter bolt uh, and I'm learning as I'm going with this job. I've never done this job before, so I just removed that 13 millimeter, 13 millimeter bolt there, and we are ready now to. It's quite free now, so it's gonna drop the whole subframe, and it should come down with the, the steering rack. And I'm just gonna watch for cables or anything like that. Yeah. 
Okay. Right, so we've dropped quite a bit now. Let's have a look at any cable or anything. Are we all good? We're all good for cables and stuff like that. So uh, Yeah, that's it. All good. So now we're gonna remove the two 13 millimeter nuts that we have here in the corner. And that's it, we're ready to remove this DPF. It's a lot more room now. A lot more room. Okay guys, so from the future, I'm just editing this video now and in the next clip you're going to see two bad DPFs in a box. Um, we do have another friend with three Skodas, two Octavias and one Superb, which has, the, they all have the same DPF. Uh, the way that the company that reconditions the DPF works, you have to send your bad one and then they recondition and send, send, send you back to you. So in order not for the cars not to be off the road, we bought a DPF first and then replaced it, sent a bad one back to the company. They reconditioned it, sent it back. But the second time, uh, all the inside of the DPF with the ceramic mesh, uh, honeycomb mesh with the precious metal was totally broken. So they were not able to recondition it. And so we have to buy another one. So they sent a good one and the bad one again to us. So when I removed Luke's um, old DPF and put it in the box, we had two, box, uh, two DPFs there. So that is the reason. So back to the video. All right guys, so you saw me struggling there. So it finally is out. It's, it's difficult to do on the driveway because you have the ground as a, as a limit there, but it's out. Uh, we have removed one more thing. Uh, if you see that bracket there at the bottom, uh, if you remove that, it will make it a lot easier to come through. So we have removed it here now. So this is the new one. Uh, so the bracket goes here. So we remove the bracket, two um, 13 millimeter nuts. So that should be a lot easier to get it through now. One thing that I didn't show, uh, there's this pipe as well, which is a pressure sensor goes here that were disconnected that I didn't show and that's pretty much it so now I'm gonna put everything back is the reverse process and uh, I'll come back when I have to do the reset in the the relearning and we have to do a regeneration as well okay guys so job done everything back together we do have a new clump for the for the GPF and a new seal which I recorded earlier on. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, all the sensors back in. So we've got the O2 sensor here, the other temperature sensor, and the other temperature sensor a bit further down there, which is gonna be hard to see. Also, underneath the car, we do have some new exhaust. Let's see if I can get it there. So some new exhaust fixings because it was rusted out. Uh, so that's new as well. And well, I think that's it. Everything is back. And we are ready to do the relearn and the first regeneration. And just one more thing, uh, the GPF. Do all the bolts, the 13 mil here, the two at the bottom, and uh, leave them a little bit loose. Otherwise you're not gonna be able to do that clump. So. Do the clamp first, put it, put the bolts in and the nuts at the bottom in. Keep them loose because it's going to be pretty close and then you can do the clamp first and then you can tighten up them um, all the way. So, okay guys, so I've got the battery maintainer there. So we, we need to do the adaptation, the relearn here now. So we're going to put the ignition on 
and first I will do the differential pressure sensor learning so that's selected so let's follow the instructions here differential is a bit place so this function enables reset of the differential pressure sensor adaptation values it should be done when the differential pressure sensor has been replaced the particle filter has been replaced or the engine control unit has been replaced so we, we replace the particle filter so we're going to go ahead and press ok different engine off ignition on so that's fine that's okay reset is carried out so please wait function complete okay so now we are going to do the GPF so there you go so catalytic particle filter again the adaptation value for particle filter uh, has to be done when replacing the particle filter adaptation values for the adapter adaptation values for calculated suit quantity and suit volume must be reset in the engine control unit after resetting suit quantity the ignition shall be turned off for 30 seconds and the new value so battery 12 volts again ignition on and off and actually i've done the adaptation for the other one i'll turn off my ignition for 30 seconds right so 30 seconds has passed ignition on again so we have the catalytic particle filter chain replaced so now we're going to go ahead press ok ignition on engine not running press ok reset is carried out so we've got all sorts of lights going off at the minute right content of suit calculated zero grams content of ash in a particle of filter so zero liter and I guess we have to press OK now. Function complete. And it says that to turn the ignition off again for 30 seconds. So, turn it off. Alright, so 30 sec seconds has passed. Ignition on again. Oh good, so now we are going to do a forced regeneration, so stationary regeneration. So there we go, so in certain driving conditions, the particle physics cannot be cleaned automatically. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, the company that provided the new DPF, uh, the instructions are you have to do the reset basically what we've done just now reset all the values and then you have to do a force regeneration so let's see uh, we're not going to be able to do it now you need to start the car run the car until we get to 75 degrees so let's start the car we've got a battery maintainer there. i don't know if it's in a good place or not let me just check the battery maintainer if it's not going to fall when i start the car all right guys, so coming back, we, we took the car for a drive uh, to get up to the temperature. So it's 82 degrees now. So we're gonna take, go, go ahead now and do the static, ecstatic regeneration. So stationary regeneration. So engine idling, cooling to 75, one quarter, at least few, uh, few we do have that. Uh, in parking, yeah, parking brake applied, engine uh, bonnet closed or hood, follow the instructions. Okay, so engine idling, we at the moment we're 80 degrees, 80 odd degrees. So you can press OK, I guess. Yeah, test engine, I don't know, yeah, parking brake applied, yeah, cooling up to 82. Okay, one close the MP, yeah, all good. 
the next step, the regeneration gets started if the present instructions are followed. Okay. Press OK. Press the brake pedal. Release brake pedal. Press down the accelerator pedal uh, in the bottom. Yeah. Release. I should have pressed and. Okay, regeneration has started, I can tell. Yeah, so do you have a glow plug light there? And it has started, I can tell. Also the rev is up to uh, 1500 RPM now. And I can tell I can tell they started. Um uh, what they say Alright, so regeneration active. Content of suit measured 1.75 grams. Temperature after particle emission filter 231 degrees. That should be increasing. That is actually going down, isn't it? Interesting. Alright guys, so I'm just gonna let let it do his the regeneration, and then I'll come back when he's, he gives me another instruction because I think it's gonna take a while now. I'm just gonna. Uh, it's, it's, it's rising now. It's rising now. Mm -hmm. It's rising quite quick now. Alright, so now we are maybe five minutes. Uh, since the regeneration started, we are up to 561, 64 degrees. And uh, yeah, I'll come back again when he's, he gives me another instruction. Zero. Alright, so we're now to zero grams now of soups, uh, 575 degrees. And one of the reasons that we are doing this um, GPF replacement was every time it was doing the regeneration there was a cloud of smoke and never stopped smoking when it was doing the regeneration and he had to drive he had to get on a dual carriageway and motorway and drive for sometimes how many miles 10 50, 10, 50 miles to clear the gps 30. because gpf obviously was uh, it wasn't performing anymore it wasn't uh, doing its job so the inside of the gpf it was it was gone and now in the regeneration and as you can see there's no smoke whatsoever I'll put, I'll put a video that I we took the other day when I was doing the regeneration and uh, it was only when I was doing the regeneration that the car was smoking like that so all good so far 575 degrees zero zero grams of soot measured so Well, it seems to be revving a little bit more now yeah. up to well, it's still 1500 but the temperature is rising again regeneration is still active it's been about 20 minutes I reckon something like that but it's definitely revving a little bit higher I can, I can tell still got the glow plug light there just above 15 now. It's definitely revving a little bit and the temperature is rising again and it seems to be coming down. It's coming down now. Regeneration successful. There we go. So just stopped. So revs back to normal. So we got the glow plug light. So let's follow the instructions again. So press OK. Function complete. Press OK. 
do we have to turn? So the glow plug light now has gone. We do have a bulb out, so that's why we have that one in there. Uh, let's see if we have any instructions here after. Oh, that's still the procedure. It doesn't say to to turn the, the ignition off for nothing like that so I think that's it guys done so that's it guys so that was the replacement uh, of the DPF filter and it's called uh, superb 2011 it might be similar ones in a golf and uh, Octavius uh, the same one and yeah, the only reason we changed is because the inside of the DPF obviously was worn out. It wasn't do its jobs anymore. And every time it was regenerating, it was just a cloud of smoke. Um, and that's why we changed it. Um, and that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope the video helps. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the, pro uh, the process of uh, doing a stationary uh, regeneration. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.